Now, Joe Manchin is one of the best examples of what's wrong with the Democratic Party. Now, this is a guy that constantly votes with corporations and the Republican Party. So we know where he stands. We know he's on the side of big money, big corporations, big industry, and of course, Republicans who also represent that same industry. Now, he is by all measures, in my opinion, basically a Republican with a D next to his name. Now, his role there is to provide cover for Republicans. Because when he votes for corporations in favor of giant tax cuts or whatever for the rich or less environmental regulations, uh, the Republicans say, see, that's not extreme. Look, we got Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin, he's a Democrat. He's bipartisan. It's bipartisan. What are you other progressives freaking out about? It's bipartisan. Vote for it. In fact, he'll vote for he'll vote with Republicans all day long and for Trump nominees. In fact, that's exactly what he does. Yet for some reason, some odd reason, a lot of mainstream Democrats, the, the corporate establishment types, say that he's more of a Democrat than Bernie Sanders. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, okay. Now, speaking of the fight between uh, Bernie Sanders progressives and the corporate establishment wing, well, look, this fight is extending into a lot of these local races. Now, you have a lot of activists that have gotten pretty angry at Joe Manchin, and they're looking to replace him if he doesn't start voting for progressive policies, things like Medicare for all, a living wage, tuition-free education. In fact, when challenged on this, hey, Joe Manchin, are you going to actually vote for progressive policies that are actually incredibly popular all across the country? Here's his response. What you ought to do is vote me out. Vote me out. I'm not changing. Find somebody else who can beat me and vote me out. Well, be careful what you wish for, Joe. You might just get it. <laughs> in the form of a new challenger backed by actual real progressives and the people. A new challenger like Paula Jean Swearingen. Now, uh, Swearingen talked to uh, The Intercept, uh, Z. Jelani. Now, um, he got a chance again to, to interview her. Uh, and basically, she is an environmental activist, if you haven't heard of her, who is descended from generations of coal miners. So she has a history with West Virginia, with coal, okay? She is a tried and true West Virginian. Uh, her family has a long history of working in the coal mines. In fact, her grandfather died of black lung, and she's had multiple family members who have suffered from illnesses related to coal mining. So this is somebody who is deeply ingrained in the community. Now, the industry, however, the coal industry, well, Joe Manchin loves the coal industry, and as does, does the, the Republicans, as well as the Democratic governor, Jim Justice. We'll mention him in a few. Now, Manchin, well, it turns out Manchin, again, is a lapdog for the coal industry. In fact, he fought the EPA's uh, uh, regulations on coal and was one of two Democrats to support President Trump's appointment of Scott Pruitt as head of the EPA. Now, in an interview with The Intercept, Swearingen described the impact coal and the environmental pollution have had on her own life. Quote, I was born a coal miner's daughter, granddaughter. I have watched several of my family members suffer with cancer, black lung, suffer from heart disease, which is prevalent in these areas as well. In fact, pollution from coal mining has impacted every area of her life, she says. When I was a little, uh, when I was a little girl, our water was orange with a blue and purple film, and we drank that water. Oh, that's awful. Nobody should have to deal with water like that. Nobody. And you have people like Marcos Melitza saying, F, you know, the people in uh, West Virginia get, they get what they voted for. <laughs> those coal miners, screw those coal miners. <laughs> they voted to get, take away their own insurance. Well, you kind of missed the point, dude. If you're a progressive, you want everybody to have insurance. It doesn't matter who they vote for. You should want everybody to have insurance. But it, I can't stand that. You know, you have some people that are like, man, you vote for that, you get what you vote for. Yeah, but that's the thing. A lot of these people were conned because they're desperate. And of course, she uh, um, mentions that. Quote, we've been bid against each other for basic human rights. There's no reason that people should have to worry about putting food on the table for their children and clean water. Appalachians are strong. We're better than that. So my path to primary Joe Manchin is to fight back. Fight back for my community. Fight back for my neighbors, my family, my friends. And a lot of people who had voted for Donald Trump 
but she doesn't care. She's like, no, you're my family. You're my community. I don't care how you voted. What I want to do is I want to take care of you. I want you to have a better future. One future, of course, that doesn't involve people dying in the coal mines, but is instead actually filled with new opportunity. Look, this is somebody who gets it, okay? And for those who are unfamiliar, and I got schooled on this pretty good by an actual West Virginian, coal is a huge part of their heritage, right? Now, just because it's a part of their heritage doesn't also mean that it's not killing them too. It is. But these coal miners, they powered America. These are the people who worked and died in the mines. So they deserve to be honored. However, their children also deserve a better future. That better future that she's actually trying to fight for. Her platform is actually built on offering West Virginians an alternative to coal. It includes support for tuition-free education, Medicare for all, and a big investment in infrastructure. And look, I think there needs to be that major infrastructure investment in these areas, not just infrastructure, but other things. If there were better jobs that paid more and had similar benefits to coal mining, well then these people would end up taking those jobs over coal mining. And then we could actually shut down the coal mines. But you don't shut down coal mines when people are still relying on that industry for good paying jobs. In West Virginia, you gotta understand, Coal mining is the only job where you could actually take care of your family on. So if you shut that down, like Hillary Clinton had said, well, it's not a very popular opinion because people don't have these places to go, these other opportunities. But if you create opportunities, oh, it turns out if you create a better opportunity for people, better jobs for people that pay better and are safer than going in the coal mines, guess what? People aren't going to stay in the coal mines. They're actually going to go and get those better jobs. And then you can actually close down those coal mines, which, again, coal is more expensive than wind energy anyway. Um, and solar is actually becoming one of the biggest, is one of the biggest employers now in America. So, <laughs> look, coal and, and fossil fuels, they're on the way out. So we have to make sure that when the bottom falls out, that these people are not left behind. You've got to give people an opportunity. If you're going to yank away coal without a replacement, you're going to lose. If you run on that, you're going to lose. Look at Hillary Clinton. That's one of the reasons she got crushed in West Virginia. Well, Bernie Sanders, well, you wouldn't think Bernie Sanders, a liberal socialist from Vermont, was going to do well in West Virginia. No, this guy won every county in West Virginia in the primary. You know why? Because he had a vision. He actually wanted to do something for these people. He actually wanted to help these people, okay? That's why this guy continues to go back over and over again to coal country to actually listen to people and actually share his vision. They don't agree on everything, but you know what? He has a vision and these people actually support that vision. And so does Swearingen. In fact, she says that the reason that people ended up voting for Trump is because they're desperate. When they don't have any other options and somebody's sitting there saying, well, let's give you jobs. Those were false promises. But when somebody is desperate to feed their children, they make poor choices. And oftentimes, there isn't a whole lot of choices. Now, she further on goes, uh, uh, she further goes on to talk about how the Democrats and the Republicans in West Virginia, they all work for the coal industry. Quote, the thing that aggravates me the most about the Republicans and Democrats in the state is that they're all the same. One of the biggest polluting coal barons in West Virginia, Jim Justice, is my Democratic governor. That's another reason that I decided to run for office because he's my governor. He's blowing silica dust three miles from my house into my children's lungs, but he's a Democrat. He's a Democrat, but he's basically a Republican. Look, truth, man, there it is. And I think that's how a lot of people see it. Well, the Republicans and the Democrats, they don't really represent me. I mean, this is the reason why the, both the Republican and Democratic parties are so deeply unpopular. Trump's deeply unpopular. Hillary Clinton's even more unpopular. Whereas people like Bernie Sanders are actually incredibly popular among the people because they don't work for those same donors. And again, you know, I don't have to go into the myriad of differences between those, uh, between the two parties when it comes to actual, you know, other issues. But when it comes to some of these economic issues, 
And some of these Democrats, like Jim Justice, like uh, Joe Manchin, they get paid by the same people. The coal industry in this case. Now, I want to get to some of the comments, and I'm pretty sure and I'm, I'm already getting some in, uh, on, uh, on this video, but man, you guys, you're so deluded, Jeff. Progressive can never win in West Virginia. They'll never vote for a Bernie Sanders-style progressive. Are you kidding me? No, the people are way, way, way conservative. They don't believe in your liberal bullshit. Okay, well, let me give you a couple of examples of why you're wrong. First of all, Bernie Sanders got Trump supporters to cheer for Medicare for all. And to say, yes, that is a superior system. We would like something like that. Bernie Sanders got Trump uh, supporters and coal miners to admit that if there were better jobs in that area, if one of the parties actually showed that they cared and tried to do investment and actually did investment in West Virginia to create better jobs, and those better jobs happen to be away from the coal industry and not tied to it at all, these people would actually be more than happy to leave the coal mine and go work in these other industries so they could take care of their families. They would be more than happy to work. And like renewable energy, for example. You put up a couple of wind farms or whatever or a solar, uh, solar plant and it's got good pay. It's got good benefits. It's better than the coal mine. You don't think people are going to work in that? Of course they will. So now look. Uh, Bernie Sanders, as I mentioned, also won every county in West Virginia. And it turns out that progressive prior priorities are really, really popular, even among Republicans. So don't tell me that a progressive doesn't have a chance. And the other thing is, is that Joe Manchin is essentially Republican light. Why would people vote for Republican light when they can vote for a real Republican? Doesn't make any sense, right? Now, the thing is, Manchin does have a couple of advantages. He's got incumbency and he's got all that money, which actually might not be an advantage after all. Because for her part, Swearingen is not taking any corporate money or any PAC money. And look, she is a Justice Democrat. The only plank that Justice Democrats actually have to have to follow is to not take corporate or PAC money. So she's not taking big money. Okay, and she's a strong progressive. She's running on a progressive platform. So knowing this, she's got a, I think she's got a chance of beating Joe Manchin. But she only has that chance if you guys, people in West Virginia, get involved. If you believe in a progressive future, then get involved and, and get out there and, and, you know, knock on doors, campaign, whatever, phone bank get people involved, and more importantly, when the primary comes, vote. That's the only way you're going to defeat somebody like Joe Manchin and send the establishment a message that we're done with corporate Democrats. We're done with right-wingers. We're done with all that. We want a progressive future. We've got a vision, and we're going to make it happen, with or without you. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.